What are you exceptionally good at, but hate doing? I'm exceptionally good at waking up. I've never not woken up. It's a curse, really. Having to face every new day with the certainty that in all likelihood my challenges and failures will carry over, over and over again. Sleep is my mistress, and a whore is she. Night after night, she holds me, coddles me, uses me. When sunlight comes knocking on my door, as it must, she jumps awake and sends me off into the world through the back door. Silent, dreary and blubbering curses to the wind. It is my back door. She is my guest. And yet, every morning I find myself in my lonely nakedness, darting from cover to cover, searching for any sign of respite from the heat of day. Tonight I will go back into the arms of my familiar. I will let her hold me, coddle me, use me, for one more chance, that when sunlight comes knocking she will keep holding me, coddling me, using me, for the more. Apparently, my job. My superiors and co-workers often comment, how good I am. In the back of my head I'm thinking wow, imagine how good I would be, if I was actually doing something I care about, and was passionate about. I'm actually kind of lazy, and don't really do as much as I could do. However they seem to like what I'm doing, so I do enough to maintain that facade, and get compensated fairly well for it. I have thought about quitting a few times, but I have sort of settled in, because it's hard to find something else out there, and if I can get away with being lazy, but somehow being thought of as good at my job, might as well milk it while I can. This is me, I don't hate my job, I just hate working. I've been working from home for the past 3 weeks, you guys know why, and my superiors commend me every chance they get about how professional I am, and how hard I'm working these past weeks. How I'm closing the same amount of incidents in less time, and with user reviews. I'm playing Animal Crossing most of the time, and re-watching Avatar, now Korra as I've already finished with Arn. Everything I have ever become exceptionally good at. As soon as I become proficient at something the fun stops and it just becomes work. I pretty much only enjoy learning, but I don't get much enjoyment out of performing what I have already learned. For example I had an amazingly fun time learning how to weld for over 10 years. There's a lot to learn in welding, and you can make major improvements for many years, you can even go your whole career learning new things about welding, but eventually you reach a point where you have become proficient, and you're only doing minor adjustments to perfect your craft. For me the joy is gone at that point, and with that goes my passion for it as well. Maybe start teaching, there can be a lot of joy and satisfaction in seeing others become good at things you are teaching them. I worked with a welding supervisor, who basically was tasked of getting the skills up he was very passionate talking about other people's welds and craftsmanship. Me too. For some reason people like to tell me every sad thing that has happened to them. From getting a stroke 10 years ago to finding their dead dog from a ditch after it ran away. In a way I don't mind listening, but I still don't know why these complete strangers want to tell me these things. OMG, it's not just me. I once had a woman I barely knew tell me all about her ape. It was horrible to hear, but she seemed to feel better after. But why me? Boomer parents and in-laws make this a bi-monthly routine. Yeah, um, Oktrada? My computer is doing THST thing again where you know it was one way, and then it was another way, but not really, but now it's super slow slash won't connect to something. Ah. Meanwhile constantly having to remove extensions and malware from sketchy free streaming movies and porn sites. That's me. I have a generally polite attitude towards everyone, and working in retail it's easy to use that to be friendly no matter what, even when a customer is angry and wanting things done now, when I need a manager and their magic key ring to get the dang machine to accept the transaction, and that takes time. They might be at the other end of the store or busy with other customers. It doesn't help that I've had a backquote mask of being happy and friendly since I was a teenager due to depression. That mask just stays on during work too. Public speaking. I'm an introvert and I do safety training for my company. Comprehension has gone up drastically and I have done quite a few talks on how to use science to make safety fun in my industry. 
but after, I have to shut myself in a hole for at least 3 hours, to get myself back to center, because it is so exhausting to me. I have to sort of be a different person, and doing that is mentally draining. I don't talk down to kids or use simplified language. Most kids really like being talked with like an equal. I imagine that people who don't particularly like kids would do the same. Go down to one or both knees, so that you're closer in height, look them in the eye, like you would an adult, and talk normally. It's not that hard, and tbh I don't get why, so many people condescend kids so much. They act like immature brats, because people keep treating them like immature brats. I love stuff like that. A steady job, that requires very little thought, but simple repetitive action, especially if I can just chill with some tunes while I work. You're living the dream. If I'm remembering correctly, in the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory book, it mentions that his father screws on toothpaste caps for his job and I always thought that would be the perfect job. I have a creativity based job and it just makes me anxious, because your creative side has to consistently be on, and it's up to clients whether it's amazing, or needs several changes. Listening. I'm fairly introvert, so my need for speaking is pretty low, so other people can vent to me, and praise me for being a good listener, but it usually bores the hell out of me. Writing. I'm good at it, because I put in the time and effort to do it correctly, not because I'm naturally skilled at it. The secret is in the editing, and re-editing at Norseam. I'm also exceptionally lazy, so doing the inherent work of putting pen to paper is excruciating. Cleaning. I hate cleaning and cleaning my own place is the worst. Feels like I have to drag myself to do the non-essential some days. Cleaning slash organizing for keepers, like pre-hoarders. My sister had this problem particularly bad, and every few years I'd totally redo her room, and make it beautiful. Last time I did this, apparently she literally fell on the ground and started crying. My mom thought she was upset at first, but it was just extreme relief and clarity, having all her things laid out nicely and easily accessible slash visible, without extra clutter. And I used rubber cement to stick black tissue paper against one of her walls, it's really easy to take down, and does not damage, and honestly it looked really really cool. It made the room feel way bigger. But I'm a keeper and I cannot keep my office clean slash organized for shit. Drawing and painting. I have always been a pretty good artist ever, since I was a young kid. When I got to college I realized I hated it, and almost never do it anymore. I'm pretty good at acrylic painting, but it takes so much time and it's so boring. Another thing is washing the stuff you used for it, and tidying up everything. Just annoying. Everybody wants me to continue painting, but I just completely lost my interest in it. This'll get buried, but I have a one in a million singing voice, for light opera and comic musicals. I'm a huge fan of classical and opera, especially late romantic slash early modern, but I fucking hate most musicals. Semicolon dash semicolon. But hey, if society collapses and you need someone to do pirates of penzance over the campfire for the kids, I guess I'll indulge. Everything. As the proverbial jack of all trades, my river of knowledge is extremely wide, though not very deep. So if there's something that seems just above the average person's pay grade, but not complicated enough to warrant paying a professional a lot of money to do, they call me. I build web bridges as my job, but I'm apparently also a plumber, electrician, construction worker, accountant, clothing tailor, chef, car repairman, appliance repairman, a slash V guy, musician, photographer, videographer, graphic designer, and all around troubleshooter for seemingly any problem. It can get a little exhausting being everything to everyone. Making sandwiches very fast and neatly. I get complimented on it all the time, and get called a sandwich artist. What a lot of people don't know, is that I'm an actual artist, with an advanced art degree and everything. Teaching. Hate is a strong word. It's more like I'm qualified to do it, and I studied for it, and even got licensed for it, but the thought of actually doing it for a living is just not me. 
It's a job that, in my view, demands authenticity, and it's an authentic for me. The education itself I don't regret, but it was unwise of my younger self to pursue it. I felt trapped, and it seemed a safe way out. It wasn't. Writing. I'm constantly told I have a way with words, but I have no idea what people are talking about. At work, I'm tasked with sending out clarifying emails, or asked when I'm going to publish an article. During college I was once voluntold to write a review article for another colleague, just because I'm good at writing an entire scientific review article on a topic I had only been recently introduced to at that time. If I participate in any projects, guess who's automatically tasked with the write-up? I dislike writing. I think it takes me longer to write than most because, well, because I think I'm horrible at it. It makes me anxious, to be honest. It took me 20 minutes just to press back quote send on this. Working. My whole team loves me. They believe that I love my job which is why I perform well. But that's not the case. I try to follow rules and do the best I can, but deep down inside, I just want to run away from everyone and everything. I hate the kind of job I have. Doing forfeiture or for the prosecutor's office. I'm really good at it. Judges trust me. I win nearly every case I should win, and settle nearly every case I wouldn't win. My job is literally taking people's property from them, and they are rarely represented, so I'm lawyering up against pro SE parties. Now, before you get the pitchforks, I have some discretion to return property, and I do when I can, and I live in a state that requires a conviction before we forfeit property, so we can't take your house or cash your car and then drop the charges. Some of it is very good policy, for instance, taking Bill's car after his 60 UI, but in general it sucks, man. Packing groceries. When I was a checker at the grocery store back in the day before reusable totes, we hated doing paper in plastic because it took extra time. But then I noticed I had repeat customers with that same request. One day when I was especially ornery, the lady saw that I was annoyed when she asked for paper and plastic and said, you're the best packer here, we always come back to you. Part of the reason they were getting their groceries in paper and plastic was so they could carry more at once. And I packed all those bags like a game of Tetris, right to the top of the bag if possible. I was a little more proud of my skills after she said that, and to this day I can pack the hell out of a grocery tote when I go shopping, but it's such a chore. Thankfully I only pack for one. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit like. If you would like to see more, feel free to subscribe.